Hello everyone, Helen here. How are you? I hope you're doing okay. Uh, yeah, I'm back again. <laughs> another chat, another chat about crafty things and things I've been doing outside. So yeah, I hope you're just going to enjoy a little bit of time spent with me today. So uh, yeah, I think I'm okay. Um, I I'm uh, managing to stay positive most of the time and I think one of the ways that I manage to do that is by use, using my trusty bullet journal. <laughs> and so I, I've just been having a little look. So it's, it's the end of March now and I've been having a little sort of review of, you know, how's the year been going and I love it that I can look through um, and, and just see how I've been doing. So, and I feel like, you know, looking at my bullet journal, I've been doing quite well. I have been going out for a walk uh, quite often and I'm doing better than I did this time last year. I have been doing quite well with my reading target that I've set myself. At the beginning of this year, I just felt I was listening to lots of audio books but I wasn't really reading many of the books on my shelves. So I set myself a little target to uh, read at least 10 minutes every day and, and then keep a track of it. And it's really nice looking at that page and seeing that actually most of the time I have read for half an hour or more each day. And I've actually got into quite a good habit of uh, fitting it in uh, right at the start of the day when I've been down and got a cup of tea first thing in the morning. I actually come quietly into my craft room and sit and read then. So that's actually um, been a revelation that why don't I do it then rather than at night time when I'm feeling a bit tired. So that's been going well. Uh, and of course, I, in my bullet journal, I've been keeping a track of all the projects I've been doing. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a review of that uh, in a moment. Um, but I mean, you know, glancing through, uh, I can now look at uh, the pages I've done where I'm showing gratitude for lots of things. I can see quotes that I've written in to sort of boost my mood if I'm not feeling so good. And I think actually the only page that I look at where I think, hmm, this is not so good is the list of projects I'd like to start. Because actually, I haven't done any of the things on there yet. So that's not so good. Three months into the year and I haven't done any of those things. Uh, I've done lots of other things, but not these. But that's not quite true, actually. One of the things on the list was to make a particular cow by Kay Jones. And I did start that one. I started it about four times and I just could not do the, get the stitch right. I can't remember if I've already talked about that. I watched the videos which were really good, nice and clear. I just could not get to grips. It was a kind of brioche stitch if you know what that is. It wasn't quite the same. I just couldn't do it. So I've decided that cowl is not for me. I'm going to move on. I'm actually going to cross that off my list and there are plenty more cowls uh, <laughs> waiting to be made. So yeah. Um, in fact, also on my list it is another cowl which was recommended. I can't remember one of my lovely viewers recommended this one. It's called the Every Bit Cowl. So that's on my list. So hopefully I'll be able to have a go at that because I've, I've bought the pattern for that now. Some of the things on, the, on this list are quite major projects, which I don't quite feel up to starting. But I think, um, oh, I don't know if you're a uh, watch regularly the Gaga Knits podcast with lovely Anita there but uh, she does a podcast usually about once a month and she's got a really good idea this year um, she has a little segment of her podcast where which is called Back to the Future and what she's doing is each month she chooses one of her unfinished or unstarted projects that have been languishing for a year or more and just having that as her um, focus for that month, you know, for something that's unfinished. And 
um, and not worrying about whether it's it gets finished by the end of the month, but just actually spending a bit of time working on it. So I thought, well, I could do something similar with, with my list here. Uh, and most of these things haven't been started. But so I'm going to declare right now that for April, I'm going to try and use this uh, gnome panel that I have shown you once before. I'll just open it out for you. Oops, here it is which I received as a Christmas present and I want to do something with it. I think I'm going to make it just into a cushion actually, cushion cover. And I have even got a cushion pad waiting to be used. So there we go. I'm declaring it to you. So I'm going to try and get that done in April. Uh, and yeah, let's see. <laughs> anyway, let's do, let's do a quick review of all the knitting, crochet, sewing projects that I've done since the beginning of 2022. So I'm just going to whiz through, show you a little picture of each one um, and write and bring you right up to date, right to the end of March. So I have made this year so far, uh, not much in the way of clothing. So I made the lovely pearl cottage cowl, which I really love and I still wear it and very happy with that. I've made three pairs of socks so far this year, just a plain vanilla sock with some beautiful self-patterning yarn and that, that was a gift to me from Dawn and Jeanette. And I've made two pairs of DK socks using a Stylecraft Special DK that I just got left over from various blanket projects. Uh, which are lovely and cosy to wear actually. And I'm using the pattern uh, Choose Your House Socks by Kay Jones. I've made one blanket, one square dune blanket, Arctic 24 pattern, using the Harbour Blanket colours and Stylecraft Special DK. I have made two iconic women from the Crochet Iconic Women book. So I've made Emmeline Pankhurst and Jane Austen. I've made three gnomes because I'm taking part in the Year of Gnomes uh, that's hosted by Sarah Shearer, who's designed all the gnome patterns. So yeah, January, February and March gnomes. Uh, I haven't got a plan for my April one yet, but who knows what that's going to be. <laughs> I've knitted two Cynthia Ballet toys. Uh, I knitted a Didi Molly mole for the first time, it's the first time I made one of those, and I've made a fourth Zutsu bear, which is going to be a gift. And I've made various other random small things. <laughs> I made the felt soft spot, which I really love, because uh, it's using the gorgeous hand-dyed yarn from, Han no, not hand-dyed yarn, hand-dyed felt from uh, Hannah's Field. Uh, I knit a set of six knitted animals, uh, which was actually a commission for somebody. I don't think I've shown you these before. I crocheted the mouse in a suitcase, which was actually, although there's lots of little things, it was quite a big project. It took quite a lot of time to make all those bits and bobs. And then I made the three crochet hens, which you may have seen recently, last week's podcast. I think I showed you those. And then finally, I have... Um, two little projects that I've just finished this week. Um, a little bear who I saw somebody had knitted. It was Hannah from Hannah's Happy Space on Instagram and, and her podcast as well that she has, Hannah's Happy Space. No, is that right? Oh, I hope I thought I'll put it on the screen. It's not right. Um, yeah, she, she'd um, crocheted a little... Um, bear called Mr. O. Louis, or from a designer called Mr. O. Louis, a German designer actually. And that is very cute. So I bought the pattern and then and made it. And just after I finished making it, um, I got an email with an updated pattern where the legs are different. So these legs are quite little stumpy ones. Um, but the in the updated pattern, there are, the legs are more like the arms. So, and the only difficulty I had with this little bear, because uh, it's knitted in um, some leftover sock yarn with a three millimeter hook, uh, was doing the arms. And I just find it really quite fiddly when, you, when you've when got a four ply yarn 
and you've only got six stitches that you're going round and round to make quite a thin arm. So I tried it about three times and then decided I needed more than six stitches. So my little arms use eight stitches and they're absolutely fine. Um, so he's rather cute. He's, he's definitely got a style all of his own. And then uh, finally, I have knitted two little uh, Easter bunnies, a little girl and a little boy. Uh, I've made these before, a few years ago, actually. I made a, a couple of bunnies and my sister came and visited and took a like to them. And so I let her take them. And I've been meaning to make some more ever since. So these are lovely. It's a pattern by Wendy Phillips. And uh, I, think, I think her Ravelry web, her Ravelry page is called Dolly Time. She makes all sorts of lovely little toys. So they're rather cute. And I shall be adding them to my Easter decorations. So yeah, so that's those. And of course, I've made a lot of leaves, but I'm not going to show you any of my 100 day project leaves this week. I'm going to do a bit of a review in next week's podcast uh, because I'll have reached the halfway point by then. And um, yeah, I'm going to, going to talk a bit more in detail about it then. So, yeah, so um, definitely my bullet journal is a very, very good companion to me in helping me stay positive. But the other way that I stay positive really is making sure that I spend a bit of time outside every day if I possibly can. And uh, one or two podcasts ago, I was chatting a bit about uh, forest bathing and just going and spending time just sitting or lying in the woods and all the benefits that that can have um, to your the state of your mind and just your general feeling of well-being. And so uh, it was a really lovely, mild day a um, few days ago when I was out and I found a really nice spot to sit in the woods uh, near the stream and and just thought, it was absolutely so beautiful and the sounds of the birds and the stream was just so calming that I thought I'd share a bit of it with you. So I've got a little little video now. Um, it's just a minute or two long and I haven't put any other soundtrack to it because we've got nature's soundtrack. So come and just relax for a couple of minutes with me in the woods. Oh, well, I hope you enjoyed sitting there in the woods with me. Uh, so, yeah, so those were a few mild sunny days that we had, which was lovely. And then suddenly this week, the temperatures have dropped again. And, um, you know, we've woken up 
theme to a covering of snow. So I just thought I'd take you on a very short snowy walk now and uh, yeah quite a contrast to the sunny day where I was sitting out in the woods but really lovely again going out in the snow always raises my spirits it doesn't have to be much snow to make me feel really happy and uh, so yeah, I thought you might like to come with me as well so let's go out into the snow <laughs> Right, so um, we're going to finish with uh, one more walk. We've been outside a lot today, haven't we? Uh, and this was just over a week ago on Mother's Day. We went for a really lovely walk. We were in Whitley Bay uh, visiting my mum and went for a really lovely walk along the cliff tops, just north of Whitley Bay from a little place called Old Hartley. And... I uh, walked along the cliffs towards one of the main landmarks of Whitley Bay, which is St Mary's Island, which has got a lighthouse on it. And actually, the, the St Mary's Island has got a really very interesting history. And I think I'm going to have to tell you more about it another time because we didn't actually go onto the island, although the tide was out. It was just coming in. You have to go across a causeway to get to the island. Um, but the lighthouse itself has been there since the late 19th century. It first was used in 1898 and uh, was used all the time until it was decommissioned in 1984. And um, yeah, it's, it's a really lovely place to go to. It's now, the lighthouse is now open as a visitor centre. So you can go right up and get lovely views of the sea all around and uh, learn a bit more about it um, in, the, in the visitor centre there but um, oh yeah we just had a really 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 lovely walk definitely going by the sea and hearing the waves crashing on the shore gives me uh, oh, really good feelings really really makes me feel positive about life and uh, so I thought you would like to come on a little walk with me along the cliff tops of Old Hartley.
okay then, it's time for me to go now. So thank you ever so much for spending time with me. Um, thank you if you've been making some lovely comments from our podcasts, but thank you for just watching. And I'll be back again soon with, with more of my chat. Uh, probably the next couple of podcasts are going to be a little bit shorter than usual because we've just got a bit of a busy family time for the next couple of weeks. Uh, week after next, I've got my nieces staying with me for the whole week, so that will be fun. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so I'll just make a couple of short podcasts for the next couple of weeks and then be back, back as usual. So until I see you again, take care, keep nice and busy and I shall see you soon. Okay, bye. Thank you.